Well, good morning. Welcome to the Thought for the Day from the Lady Grove Church. I was thinking about um, my time in the secondary school and um, some of the detentions that we had to uh, go through. There was one teacher who would require you to come back at the end of, of school and for the class to sit in silence for, for only 10 minutes. Didn't seem very long, but he would say that it had to be total silence. And if anyone made a noise, that silent or that 10 minutes would start afresh. And so there you'd be sitting, counting down the seconds, hoping that the class joker wouldn't make a silly noise within that 10 minutes. And sure enough, every so often they did. So what started off as 10 minutes, sometimes lasted well over an hour. And I guess today, Thursday, the whatever it is, what is it? The 26th of November, we're all sitting here waiting to find out when we can be let out of detention. And it doesn't matter in many ways how well behaved we have been, how much we have abided by all the restrictions and done our utmost to avoid catching COVID-19 or spreading COVID-19. We're worrying about the classroom joker and whether he or she, through their attitude to this virus, has caused us to end up in tier two or three, as I gather most of us will not be in tier one when we're here later. And that will keep us under some sort of restrictions. And it got me thinking that this doesn't just apply to the lockdown. I guess this applies to how we are in life because the reality is whoever we are, whatever we do, those around us also affect us. I came across a, a video clip the other day where a guy was saying um, that we are each like a, a cup of tea brewed by God. And actually we've got to realise that none of us are everyone's cup of tea. There will be people who don't get us, who may not like us, who might not like the stance we, we take or our attitude to something. But we are who we are work in progress true in that God is still working in us and through us but we can't meet everyone's hopes and dreams in some ways our identity isn't something that simply we can carve out However many times you'll hear from celebrities about reinventing ourselves, our identity also relies on other people and their view of us. When Jesus first started his ministry, he stood in the synagogue in Nazareth and pulled out a prophecy from the book of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Jesus came to set people free. 
whatever it was that was holding them back, whatever it was that prevented them from being who God knows they can be. And then later, in John's Gospel, when he's talking to the Jews, he says, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place for, in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. While we may be held back, be prevented from doing things by this COVID-19 and whichever tier the cabinets decide we fit in. Ultimately, the freedom that we get comes from Christ. And when he sets us free, we are free indeed. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says it was for freedom that Christ has set us free and that we're no longer to be subject to the yoke of slavery. You may recognise those words from a, a hymn that we sometimes sing at church. Jesus, we celebrate your victory. Jesus, we revel in your love. Today, as we discover what lockdown, what tier we're going to be in and how that will affect the next few weeks, months, how it will affect Christmas, let's remember that Jesus came that first Christmas and has brought us freedom. And nobody can take that away from us. Not the classroom full, not people in Parliament. We are free indeed because of Jesus and because of what he has done for us. So let's go through today. Sure, positive of our freedom, our freedom to bless others, our freedom to show love, our freedom to walk close with our God and speak of compassion in our words and our deeds. Let's pray. So Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for our identity in him. We thank you because of his death on the cross and his resurrection and his defeating of sin and death that we are children of God and that we are truly free that no matter what people say about us how people are around us we are precious in your sight and nobody and no virus no nothing can take that status away from us Lord we Pray that we might be more confident in who we are in you. And that with that confidence we would go through our days standing up for righteousness, living out compassion, showing mercy to our neighbours. And to all those that we encounter. And Lord, we 
we pray for today as people discover where they fit. Where they fit within the restrictions laid down by this government. Restrictions that are for our good, hopefully, but have consequences and repercussions. Lord, we hear stories of people not, not listening, not paying attention, thinking that it doesn't apply to them because they're bored or they're young. each one of us to see the part that we need to play that we might get back on our feet and as we heard the Chancellor of the Exchequer's statement yesterday we pray for all those who, who have worked so hard at this time going way beyond the requirements of their job descriptions to, to support people, to show care, to keep this nation going. And yet now they hear that they are not worthy of a pay increase. And while we recognise that we are in that difficult time financially. We also recognise that people want and need recognition for what they have done. So Lord, we pray that <coughs> that people might might know how loved and appreciated they would they are even if that may not be shown in monetary terms and we particularly give thanks for for all those in education many of whom haven't had any time off for goodness knows how long they've sought to support their children and young people and students and also supported families Lord we thank you for them and we ask that you would bless them and even in this busyness of, of life that they would they would know your rest and peace. And Lord, as we uh, approach Advent and Christmas and all the preparations and we're aware that many retailers will be celebrating Black Friday tomorrow. Lord, we pray for this world that is so hung up on consumerism and money. Lord, we pray for simplicity, a desire to, to possess only what we need so that our wealth might be distributed more fairly across this planet. And that all people will know what it's like to be satisfied and fed and watered and housed and clothed. And Lord, I watched the, the morning for Maradona on the news today. It seemed like hundreds of thousands came out. I think about the death of a, a fallen brother.
broken human being who, yes, was skilled, but also had his dark side. And then I think about how many people come to church and celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. seem to have their priorities wrong. Let us pray for a fresh awakening of who you are. That we might come to worship you and give you thanks and show our appreciation for who you are and what you have done for us. And I guess that starts with each one of us as individuals. So may our lives speak of your values, Lord, speak of your kingdom. May our words and actions bring glory to your name. we celebrate our freedom and take on the identity by clothing ourselves in Christ. And so let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, as I say, Advent Sunday, this coming Sunday, this lead up to Christmas. So I will see you there. In the meantime, take care and look after one another. God bless.